In car audio, it's very advantageous to have the ability to build a subwoofer enclosure that will fit anywhere in the vehicle. If we know the right steps, we can install a subwoofer in a cubby space, near a wheel well pocket, or even in the spare tire location. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this spare tire subwoofer enclosure, how I determined the air volume inside this subwoofer enclosure, and the full build process step by step. Let's design, build, and install. So before we get started, I do wanna point out really quick that this vehicle does not have a spare tire from the factory. The vehicle has large oversized brakes and it actually has a different wheel size in the front and the back. So a normal donut style spare tire just simply won't work. So for this application, it gives me the perfect opportunity to install into that spare tire location. That said, I do want to stress that the steps I'm showing in this video can be applied to anywhere in the vehicle. You can use these steps in this video in order to break things down and calculate the volume and to actually stack and make a shaped enclosure. Let's get on into the build. So for this project, I'm gonna be using two of these bad boys right here, the Focal E25KX 10 inch subwoofers. These are rated at 600 watts RMS, a really, really nice high quality sound quality subwoofer. Now I printed off the spec sheet from their website and I did a little bit of designing and I found that their recommendation of 0.78 cubic feet per subwoofer is going to be really really nice for the type of response that I'm looking for with this sealed enclosure. So now it's a matter of working through the math here in the trunk and kind of thinking through my process. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two different circles in order to stack a shape, to stack a profile that will become the box. And because I'm using the these two different circles, I can easily measure the inside diameter of those circles. I can use that inside diameter to determine the air volume inside, and I can actually easily calculate the volume of this enclosure. I'm going to do some pencil and paper math, and I'll come back to you guys with the findings. Now, I've already picked my target air volume, and I've went through the math to determine that I have enough room, but I wanna give you guys a little bit of information on how you can estimate your air volume early on in a project. As you can see, I have a couple of Mobile Solutions circle templates down in the wheel well here. Now you guys could make your own circles or any shape really. The idea is you just want to have a shape that you can easily determine the area of. So with a circle like we have here, the area of a circle, the formula for that is pi r squared. So diameter, we can determine that by measuring from here to here, and we'll divide that by two for the radius. We'll do pi times the radius times the radius, that's pi r squared, and we know the surface area of that circle. I can then, of course, measure the smaller circle as well and do that for both circles. So here we have these formulas here. Now keep in mind, these formulas are only going to give us the area of a circle. We actually want the volume. So we need to multiply each of these formulas times the height of each of our layers. I know that I'm doing a stacked enclosure and I'm using three quarter inch wood. So I'm gonna multiply both of those by three quarters of an inch. So I've done the math here for each layer of wood that I use that's the small circle, I'm gonna have 133 cubic inches inside that circle. And for each layer of the large, I'll have 260 cubic inches. Next, what I do is I take what I want the internal air volume to be, in this case, 1.3 cubic feet of airspace, and I'm going to convert to cubic inches. To do that, I multiply by 1728, because 12 times 12 times 12 is 1728. That converts to cubic inches, so that's how many cubic inches I need. Now, each of these subwoofers also takes up room in the enclosure, so it has a cubic inch size. They're about 173 and there's two of them. So my total internal air volume in order to get 1.3 cubic feet of airspace needs to be 2,592 cubic inches. So now what I can do is I can multiply the total of the small layer volume by four because I know I need at least four layers at that size. So that gives me 532 cubic inches. So I subtract that 532 from the 2592. And that tells me that I need to take up at least 2060 more cubic inches. So how many layers at the large do I need? Well, I can find that by going 2060 divided by 
260, and that gives me approximately eight layers. So by doing this, I've estimated what I need to do. I need about four layers at the small size and about eight layers at the large size. Now this is just an example problem, but it gives you guys an idea. I just wanted to show you guys that because you can use simple math to easily calculate what the approximate internal air volume is going to be. And let's say that you wanted to do something like add in a little bit of extra air volume in this location here because I can once I get up to about this level. Well, I can approximate that air volume just by doing depth times width times height and determine in a rectangular prism volume and add that on. So I've got a plan here. Now I can start cutting my layers. I'm gonna start with that first base layer that is going to mount into the vehicle. Now, rather than making the small circles first, I'm actually going to start with making the large circles. And I'm doing this so that I can use the inside material later on in the process. That way I'm maximizing the efficiency of my use of wood materials. Now that I've traced the outline of the large circle onto the material, I'm cutting it down to size using the table saw. That way it's more manageable once I'm using it on the router. I'm going to be copying the shape of this large circle template, so I'm applying double-sided template tape to the back side of the template. I then remove the backing paper and stick the template onto the board. Now I copy the template shape using a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. Whenever I show the use of a router or a router table in my videos, a lot of you guys ask what I like to use for those, so you can check out the video up in the corner of the screen. In all of my videos, I also provide a nice list down in the video description of links to the different tools and materials that I use, so you can check that out as well. So this circle here is my first layer, and now I need to attach it to a new layer of wood that I'll again be trimming on the router. In this case, these two pieces are going to be permanently attached to each other, so I use wood glue and brad nails. After drilling a pilot hole in order to start the router bit, I then cut out the inside of this shape and then the outside. So this shot here gives you an idea what I've started to do in the trunk with this large circle. Now I definitely need to add a couple more layers. To add more layers, I just continually repeat the same process that I just showed you. So I've got four layers built here of the overall circle size. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make that bottom layer that is going to then space over and capture the smaller circle. So let's do that. Before we get into that though, let's take a quick second to thank show sponsor, Soundskins. Maybe you were wondering what is all this black material everywhere in the trunk? Well, this is Soundskins Pro material. Soundskins Pro is a sound deadening material that combines the typical butyl and foil layers with an acoustic foam layer. This material helps to cut down on vibrations in the vehicle as well as unwanted noise. It truly is a unique material and Soundskins was cool enough to hook us up with a car audio fabrication fan only discount. So you can check out details about Soundskins and that discount down in the video description. Let's get back in to making the transition layer. To make my transition layer, I start with trimming the same outside profile, but I'm going to leave the inside intact. I add some of the Mobile Solution circle templates inside of my shape, and I sketch a few lines. That way I know where to drill my pilot hole in order to start the router bit. I then stick one of the templates in place using the template tape, and I cut the inside of that profile. Another quick check in the vehicle, and things are looking good. Now I need to just start extending rings from the bottom of that smaller circle downwards. To do this, I'm going to start with copying that same smaller template shape once again. I apply more wood glue and then I use the brad nailer to secure that ring into place. Now off camera, I had slightly increased the size of the hole in that transition layer and I did that to allow for clearance on the subwoofer magnets. So here I am just flush trimming the inside of that new ring to match the transition layer. So now with our subwoofer enclosure flipped upside down, it looks a little something like this. And as you can imagine, I now need to just add more layers of that smaller circle. I repeat that process and I also create another transition layer as you can see here. So this is really formed the entire subwoofer enclosure, now I just need to make a cap on the bottom. I made the cap using a circle template and now I'm using this 45 degree chamfer bit just to give it more of a finished look on the bottom side. I apply glue to this cap piece, I align it, and then I brad nail it in place a final time. I can now position the finished stack within the vehicle, but we're not done quite yet. We still need to make that top baffle that will hold the subwoofers. To make the shape of this, I'm actually using the panel that came factory from the vehicle and I'm tracing it on to a new piece of wood. After rough cutting my piece of wood, I'm applying template tape to the back side of that factory piece. 
This of course allows me to temporarily stick that factory piece to the new piece of wood and you can see here I'm using a specialized router bit that has this square bearing on top. The reason that I'm using this square bearing with the flush trim bit is I found that that factory piece it's kind of a soft cardboard type material and a normal bearing would kind of push into it so the square bearing works better for this. I do a quick test fit and I find that some of my wiring is actually in the way of this panel so I can alleviate that problem by simply notching this corner using a couple of templates and a normal flush trim bit. This gives me a nice overall baffle piece that perfectly fits the vehicle. Now I'm curious if any of you guys know why I made this baffle much larger than the rest of the enclosure. If you think you know, drop me a comment down below. In the meantime, I'm sketching out different geometry and I'm doing some measurements in order to determine exactly where to cut the subwoofer holes. Once located, I stick the templates into position to use the flush trim bit on the router to trim away that excess material. So now that the subwoofer enclosure is finished, make sure that you come back to see how I make the beauty panels for the subwoofers and for the amplifiers and finish this build. Now guys, I put a ton of effort into editing these videos and making them to help you guys out. So if you can just take that quick second that it takes to hit Hit that like button it would really mean a lot to me i appreciate you guys a big thanks to channel sponsor soundskins and brian john brian ali nick steve jerry emmanuel and the rest of the patreon membership team a big thanks to those guys for helping with the making of these videos you can learn more about that as well down below thank you guys for watching